So, Leon, um, how did sacraments fit into Christian identity? How does that all work? Are they important right. for Christian identity? I, I would say they are most important. Right. Um, at least for many Christians, if not the majority right. of Christians. Um, if you look at baptism, it is the entrance right into the community. Now, how important can it be yeah. to belong to the community? How mm -hmm. important can it be then to have that right performed? Whether as an infant or sure. as an adult, that's, mm -hmm. not, that's not discretionary. Um, when you look at the Eucharist or Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper, it's, 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 it goes by different names, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Um, I would say that the Eucharist, one of the things that the Eucharist does is expressing the unity between Jesus Christ and the believers. So, when you look at, when, when you were in, in, in a worship service and the Eucharist is performed, and especially in a more traditional one, where you have the long, long Eucharistic prayers, and they're boring, I know, but actually they're very rich. Once you, you start paying attention to it, mm -hmm. They are very, very rich in what they say in their theology. Um, when, when you look at them, when, when, you, when you pray those prayers, because they are really prayers, mm -hmm. it is all about that unity with Christ. It is Christ who says, my, my body is broken on the cross, my body was broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins of men, for a better world, for restoring our relationship, the relationship between the believers and God. Um, and, and the sign of that in the Eucharist is that little wafer that you get, or that little piece of bread. Mm -hmm. And in the Eucharistic rite that is broken, just as that, that symbol of brokenness, and nevertheless it's a symbol of unity at the same time, which is kind of a paradox mm -hmm. there, but it was going on. But imagine that you go up to, um, to the front, to the priest, to receive communion, whether that's kneeling at altar real as in the Scottish Episcopal Church or you stand in other churches or you walk that's not what I meant. But imagine you go up and you receive that wave, you receive that little piece of bread. That that very intimate union mm -hmm. with Christ. That's amazing. Yeah. Christ saying, This is my body broken for you. Mm -hmm. And the same with, with the wine, this is my blood poured out mm -hmm. for you, for, for my people. And they just, I mean, you, you can't get more intimate sure. than tasting that, than feeling that, than smelling that. All of the senses are involved in mm -hmm. the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. So I think for Christian identity, for many people that will be very, very important to have that kind of intimate relationship with Christ. This, this is just one of the, of the many aspects of the Eucharist, of course, but I, yeah. I think in terms of Christian identity, in terms of Christian spirituality, I would say this, this kind of intimacy that's happening in the Eucharist is mm -hmm. very important. So is this what John's Gospel was trying to get at in the image of the vine? That's a good question and, and, and I would say yes. I would say yes, although I'm not sure whether John has exactly the same Eucharistic right in mind, okay. because the way we do it now is, is admittedly quite different from yeah. 2,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, John was speaking all the time about that unity, that participation yeah. in Christ. And that's is, the Christian identity, yes. to share in Yes, it's spirit. being in Christ, as, as, as the Apostle Paul will say. And, and yeah. John has all those Im images of yeah. the vine, as you say, and the branches, and, and, and all those intimate images of, of that, that close unity between the Christian and, and Paul and has God. that image of the church is the body of Christ. Yes. So both Christian identity, both sharing in the identity of Jesus, but also sharing in the identity of the body of the church. Mm -hmm. So those are two, two different things, aren't they? Yeah, but, but that's why I say the Eucharist, yeah. what I just said, yeah, is, is one church. aspect of the, yeah. of the Eucharist. There are many, many other things to say. I mean, it's, it has also an ethical component. Yeah. If, if you are so close with Christ, well, if, if, you, if you declare by doing that ritual, performing that ritual, taking part in that, taking part in the bread and the wine, 
if by that you say, I'm a follower of Christ, then that has huge ethical implications. Sure. That has huge implications for how I then treat my neighbour, yeah. even my enemy, how I love God, yeah. through how I mm -hmm. relate to my neighbour. Right. Um, and and if, if you look at the Eucharistic rites, just before that whole mm -hmm. prayer, that long prayer, mm -hmm. which can be boring, I mean, <laughs> despite all my language very intimacy, and, you know, I'm enthusiastic about this, um, but I also realise that sometimes it can be quite boring. But just before that long prayer, in many churches you will have the sharing of the peace, yes, as it's right. called. Yes. So people stand up, shake hands, and wish each other, in the traditional language, mm -hmm. the peace of Christ be with you. Mm -hmm. Now, how on earth can I wish you peace if I have a conflict with you, and then go mm -hmm. and have that intimate communion with mm -hmm. Christ? Mm -hmm. it's, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So that right... That Eucharistic rite does a whole lot, including that moment of the peace. Yeah. And so, so there you have your ethical, yeah. ethical implications, yes. That's so interesting. So that's baptism, that's Eucharist, or mm -hmm. like Lord's Supper, or Mass, whatever you want to call it. What are the other sacraments? Well, those, are, those two are recognised by all churches. Okay, so right? some churches... Well, okay. almost all. Okay. The Quakers, for example, say yeah. we don't have sacraments because okay. everything, the whole world is sacramental, so we don't need to have that kind of intensification okay. there. Uh, but most churches, I would say, have those two sacraments, baptism and Eucharist, which are sometimes called the dominical okay. sacraments. Dominical meaning the Lord, the Lord instituted them. Right. So Jesus actually said, right. okay. you need to baptize, you need to uh, remember me in this, in this meal, the mm -hmm. Eucharist. Um, if you look at the Roman Catholic Church, they have five more, mm -hmm. and if I know them by heart, they are uh, ordination, they are uh, marriage, they are uh, penance, confirmation, and anointing of the sick, yeah. right? If you look at the Greek Orthodox Church, their theology has, has, has uh, developed very differently in the mm -hmm. East and in the West. Um, the Eastern Orthodox Church would refuse to say this is the number of sacraments. Right. There may be many more, and if you look at, at the church tradition, it was only until the 13th century that there was no fixed number of sacraments. Right. So, and, and nowadays in, in, in modern day theology, you see a kind of movement back to maybe we should talk about a sacramental worldview. Maybe there is m much mm -hmm. more sacramental mm -hmm. than just baptism or Eucharist. Okay. Or but would you say that baptism and Eucharist are the two key ones for Christian identity? I would say so, yes. Because marriage, it's not such a marker of identity or holy ownership. No, but the, the, the sacraments are not just markers of okay. identity, they are more. Yeah, they're they're okay. something different, actually. They're, okay. they're intensifications of God's grace shown yeah. to the believers, I would say. Right. So, it, reportedly, St. Augustine, uh, Augustine said um, the sacraments are the physical grace or the physical signs of the invisible grace. So I think that's, that's a good way of, at least a good starting point to think about sacraments, rather than it's yeah. just Christian identity. That makes sense. That makes Baptism sense. is certainly a Christian identity marker. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not necessarily true it's in the same way yeah. for, for the other sacraments, I would okay. say. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's a You're brilliant welcome. summary for us. Really helpful and so clear. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure.